that one. Here. Spot. And the last name is pronounced Polly. Polly. Cool. That's good. Yeah, like the name Polly. A U L E Y. Yeah, we can find you there too. Polly Pavilion. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. L A. One thing I would do is just because of the camera where it's at, if you can move your microphone over to the side, like like that. So we're not that way the we can see you. Oh yeah, that's a little better. That. Yeah, and we can hear you. Yeah, that works. Okay. So. All right, you good to go? <laughs> Let's do it. All right, and three, two, one. This is the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast, brought to you by Cisco. Cisco is here to help set you up for success by delivering high-quality foods, products, and services for your restaurant. Recording live to digital from the NC f and studios in downtown Raleigh. Join us as we lead you into the kitchen, inside the bottle, and into the minds of the food and beverage industry. And now, paying the busboy to finish their side work, it's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And today, we have a future star on the show. This young man is a uh, seasoned competitive chef through Master Chef Juniors with Gordon Ramsay, and uh, we kind of get a look into the eyes of the culinary world yeah. through the innocent eyes of a child. <laughs> One ten-year-old Master Chef Junior, Emerson Polly. Hello. Yeah, there's a huge audience. In the- yeah, you got <laughs> You're a celebrity now, Emerson. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels pretty cool. Does it feel like this in your head? Uh, I just wanted to be able exactly. to use that. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're kind of like set up for stardom. You, uh, Your mom was telling us. And by the way, your your mom was nice enough to join us, Miss Tate Polly. Welcome. Hello. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks for being here. Definitely. Um, to, to set the scene, so you uh, you live in the area, in the Raleigh-Durham area. Yeah. And uh, you were uh, from California. And at five years old, you started acting. So you're kind of very comfortable being in front of the camera talking on a microphone. Is that right? Yeah, because, like, I've been doing it for so long, it just kind of feels normal. And you kind of got that. He kind of has that sly grin. And maybe he had that even as a kid. Mom. Forever. Yeah. Yes. They were, he's just like, he's just like, I got it. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't seem shy. You, uh, you remind me a little bit of someone like me. <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> never shy in front of the camera or on the mic. Um, but you've been doing this for how long? When did you get started? Um, when I was five years old, I got started acting. Yeah. But acting and obviously, let's not bury the lead, cooking too, yeah. right? So how? when did you get started cooking? Like three years old, probably. Oh, three really? years old? Yeah. Baking with you? Are you? Baking, Okay. yes. Helping in the kitchen. We did a lot of deviled eggs. Did you intentionally do that? Were you like, Emerson, you're going to learn this? Or he just kind of gravitated? I would say both. Yeah. Definitely intentional. As, you know, I grew up cooking. His dad grew up cooking. We wanted to make sure that he knew how to cook just as a person, as, mm-hmm. a, you know, um, as a kid. And he just liked it. So you know, we just kept doing it. Okay. Emerson, have you been, besides your mom and stuff, have you ever been formally trained? Did you take any culinary classes or anything? Um, well, I did take one little class in California. I don't mm-hmm. know what it was called. But it was, I loved it. It was so fun. We got to make, like, like something fun, and we could, um, and then we got to eat it, and I loved doing it. I think I only did it, like, twice, though. Okay. You did. It was like a little chef cooking school type thing. And he okay. did, uh, I think one night he went with a friend, and then one night we did like a mommy and me class, and you made cherry turnovers. I do remember that. Oh, that sounds delicious. Cherry turnovers. Yeah. Mm. Wait, and so, Tate, are you a trained or just various uh, accomplished home cook, or were you in the business? Well, so my mom was a caterer, okay. and she did it out of her home. So 
when I was younger than him, I started helping her in the kitchen and uh, you know, just working parties when I was you know 12 years old. And then right. you know my my mom uh, hired all of our friends, and it was just a very much like a home based business. Cool. And so that's how I learned. Okay. And so Emerson, when was the time, or how old were you when you felt comfortable, ready for cooking competitions? I actually like never thought of cooking competitions. Okay. They just like. I was actually on my way back from Christmas at um, at Florida with my grandparents, mm-hmm. and my mom was like, do you want to do a cooking competition? I'm like, um, sure. <laughs> and then he I... seized the opportunity. He did. He yeah. did. They, they reached out to us on Instagram. Um, I had posted, you know, he's got an account that I manage. And I had just posted something of him cooking and they saw it and they reached out and they asked if he wanted to audition. And so he started the audition process. Uh, and yeah, they, you know, at some point they were like, do you want to work on your skills a little bit more? You definitely have the personality. And he said, let's go for it this year. So yeah. that's what he did. That was a year ago, Jump, uh, December. Right. Yeah. Jump in when the, when the water's warm. So, hey, hey Matt. Yeah. What about your boys? Do they cook? Because uh, your age, the ages of your boys are now seven and four. Seven and four. I, yeah. I caught uh, Cam microwaving some uh, a paper cup, so oh. I'm not sure if they're really, you know, <laughs> <Both get punched laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> um, but, but we'll see. You never know what happens. Uh, yeah. Paper cup. Yeah. They yeah. learned cup. it. Learned it from TikTok. Don't, my daughter just said something about like put a paper cup in the microwave and it like catches fire or something is that what he was trying to do well that was I that no he wasn't trying to do he was trying to heat it up and then um freeze it to see how long it would take to freeze like doing a science experiment sort of thing <laughs> yeah. his own science experiment and that's what I was worried about I was like you can start a fire here <laughs> and yeah and of course yeah my my uh, my uh, older ones oh they're older now so they're they're like you know 10 and 13 almost 14 and they'll cook, and actually now at this point, I can get Alexandra to like help with dinner. I'm like, hey, will you uh, you roast these off while I'm doing this, or chop these vegetables while I do that? I've got a little sous chef at home, so that's fun. There you go. Yeah. How are your knife skills, Emerson? Um, I'm I would say I'm pretty good, but um, my friend Lorenzo on the show. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He he's really good at chopping. Is that right? No, uh, no finger accidents at all with the knives. Um, I had one with a knife that wasn't chopping. It was a pocket knife. I'm a Cub Scout, so. Oh, oh you're a Cub Scout, right. also. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, right here, right here. Isn't no, that two, two fingers? Is it two now? <laughs> yeah, it's two fingers. It's three back in the day, old wasn't dad. It? You're such an old dad. <laughs> we we <go>. blow. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Emerson, once you got the call to go on competition cooking, did you start to hone your skills? And how, or how did the audition process go? Like, did you have to go to L.A. or did you have to get, what, what was it like? So, I actually didn't go to L.A. when I was auditioning. I stayed at home and we just cooked a bunch. We tried out for outfits. And that actually took, like, six weeks. Yeah, it was a long process. Did you, did you just shoot stuff at home and send it in? Or exactly. How it they would tell us, um, you know, what kind of film they wanted, what kind of dishes he needed to prepare, the time limits and that sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, there was definitely a crash course. Yeah. Uh, we were cooking every night. Okay. And uh, and then he did a Zoom, which was a, like, two-hour Zoom where he had to make a dish completely on his own for the producer on Zoom. In and a certain amount of time. In a certain amount of time, yes. And what did do you remember what, what you made? Yeah, what was the dish? I made um, steak and eggs with hash browns and roasted mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Yum. That yeah. sounds delicious. Yeah, that's really Does good. it get a little nerve wracking with the time, like with the clock ticking away while you're doing it? It really does. Yeah. Like, when you're cooking, you normally you're like, okay, I can do this and then this and then this. But when you're cook when you have a time, you, you're like, okay, I got to do this, but no, I have to do this at the same time because I don't have enough time to do them all at different times. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot of trial trial runs to make sure that he got the time. And so were, would you set, uh, so you would set that up and be like, yeah, do this I mean, in this amount Dad of time? Dad and I were definitely set up crew, clean up crew, and... Um, <laughs> 
Yeah. I need a I need a setup and cleanup crew. You see, you got the sous chef at home. Like I would definitely do more cooking at home if I had the setup and cleanup yeah. crew. And you then, don't do yeah. the like it, you cook, I clean, I cook, you clean type of thing. Oh please, let's not even get into that. You know, <laughs> Sarah's well, we not wiping down counters. And I mean, she is, but then we also have the thing where you know we're still at the age where our kids need to be put to bed. So. Oh, so that's the excuse. So oh, sorry, I, I can't well, do the dishes. I yeah. gotta put the kids down. Oh, yeah, I like her style. Yeah, Good job, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, Emerson, do you go to bed like when your mom tells you to go to bed, or do you have to be like put to bed, read a story to? You're ten years old now, so my yeah. mom tells me to go to bed, and I I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I'll lay there for about twenty minutes. So yeah. Then I'll pick up my book and just read. <laughs> And then I'll set it down, and I'll lay there for a while. Yeah. And then I look at the clock, and it's like 11, and I'm like, what? And then you finally go to sleep? And and then I lay there for another hour or so. So I'm not like a whisperer or anything, but as a dad with two young boys, let me give you some advice. First of all, listen to your mom and dad. My, my four-year-old has come up. Actually, we got to record it. Uh, it's a great song. It's Sweep of the Nation called Listen to Your Mom and Dad. It's, it's, I'll show you it later. Um, but then, here's an idea. When you first hit the bed, read the book then. It'll be easier to go to sleep. What do you think? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're practicing. All We're right. Practicing. So what did you have to make on the show, and what was like... Well, for, oh, actually, well, yeah, before let's, that. Let's frame this a little bit, yeah. because we're talking about... Uh, master Chef. Junior Master yeah. Chef, right? With, of course, let's not bury the lead, with Chef Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. That's a big deal. Gordon Ramsay is an amazing chef. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Most people think he's like, yeah. Where's the lime sauce? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he has a TV persona. I mean, he, he's on Hell's Kitchen as well, and he's he's built up that persona on TV of being a monster. But really, from what I've heard, he's actually a pretty decent guy. I mean, what's your what's your opinion? I think that he's like a really nice guy. Did you know that this apron that I'm wearing right now, Gordon Ramsay has touched? <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Next time, have him sign it. Yeah. I. I asked them to. Oh, okay. <laughs> you wouldn't do it? No. You know, we have, a, we have like a six degrees of separation, you and I. Uh, you don't know what that means, but like where there's like uh, so many different people that are connected um, to a story. So Gordon Ramsay, Hell's Kitchen, his original sous chef was uh, Scott uh, Lieben, and Scott was like, the bigger jerk on the show. He was like the bald guy that was always shouting and screaming at everybody. But Scott was my chef at Napa Valley Grill in Los Angeles in Westwood for a long time. And he actually was exactly the same in real life. So <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't a persona. He, uh, was, he was, was just being authentic. That's Scott. Yeah, yeah. yeah Scott. We're, we're Facebook buddies. You know I love you, man. But uh, no, excellent chef. And then he got that. You know, when you're in Los Angeles, cameras are not far like yeah. it's like uh, hey you're pretty good at this let's do it on tv yeah and so he got the gig and started uh i think he did like the first like five six seven seasons i mean he was on for a long time and uh but that was the joke was that gordon ramsay was getting one-upped by being mean because scott was so <laughs> insanely mean but um but that's you know that was like the old way of thinking the, of the restaurant industry everybody used to scream and yell at each other and uh it was hostile but uh, I'd say that's not the way it is nowadays. We're we're nicer not at now, all. right? Not at all. Was at that least the way with it the was? kids? <laughs> yeah. 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 Did he not do a lot of screaming with the kids? No. He. I mean, I did get called a donut. A donut. Okay. <laughs> donut. What kind of donut? I mean, was he specific or? Um. No, he just said donut. Okay. And speaking of donuts. Mm. Oh, what a segue! Seriously, this is a, not just a master chef, master MC over here. <laughs> what do you, What do you got over there? I brought y'all some I lemon, blueberry donuts. Blueberry donuts. Blueberry donuts. Oh donuts. my goodness! Hey, okay. oh, you, you're sharing. Thank you. Oh, let's put this up on the camera. Look at this. Yeah. Made by Junior Master Chef Emerson Polly. That's amazing. Thank you. This looks amazing, and the frosting is on the bottom, or it's kind. Of, what it's what on is the top. On the, what what is that on the on the bottom? What do we? Uh, so, there's what, what's in this? So there's lemon zest. Yeah, there mm. is. to get that lemon flavor. Mm-hmm. 
There's blueberries, they explode <laughs> when you put them in the oven. <laughs> yeah, this is delicious. Wait, why did the blueberries explode? Because the heat inside the blueberry just kind of gets too hot and boom. And boom. <laughs> and then your cleanup crew takes care of it. Yeah. And then they do. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so what were what were some of the trial dishes that you guys were making to, to get to get prepared for? Uh, by the way, yeah, mm-hmm. that is delicious. The lemon zest. The yeah, blueberry. he's looking for a thumbs up. Major thumbs up yeah. right here. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Did you make those last night? Uh, we made them this morning, actually. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you so much. We practiced them because he had never actually made donuts. Oh. And so these are baked donuts. Yeah. Um, and being called a donut by Gordon Ramsay, you should make a donut in right? Your life, right? <laughs> yeah, if he's going to so call it. So we tried them on Sunday, and we thought they were good enough to bring to you guys. They are really good. So we made a new batch yeah. this morning. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. And, we're, and we always appreciate that for all of you out there. We're always recording like right around that lunch time yeah and never n- rarely people bring us their food yeah it's like we're a food show people <laughs> we're here to eat sometimes when we do the whiskey episodes it's it gets yeah, a little we're whiskey <laughs> <laughs> three three episode three rounds of whiskeys but um let's talk about the because i've been on set a few times and you've been on set now and you act and you're a a, a chef in training but yeah. what was like? Um, what was it? A, a day of shooting like on the set? What, give us a, your opinion of being on set. So, we it's like actually very long. Mm-hmm. The day that we um, were shooting, it was a nine-hour day. We were on set, so we actually woke up at like six in the morning. We got up and we got ready. This is in Los Angeles, right? Yes. Do you remember what studio you were at? Do you no. remember, like, was it, it wasn't like um, Raleigh Studios, oddly enough. There's no. There's a, a great studio called Raleigh Studios in Los Angeles. It was somewhere, I don't know, it was like Van Nuys or something. And oh, yeah. It, it was, you know, next to a storage facility. It was. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of indiscreet, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. So you're there early in the morning, 6 a.m., and we, we wake up, we get ready, it's about 7 now, and we get in the elevator, and there's tons of people downstairs, like all the other contestants are downstairs, and we get on a bus, and we go to the place, because we were in our hotel, and then when we get there, they like put us in a room, and we, st- we stay there for like, I would say maybe an hour while they're getting us ready. Then we go to um Getting work. ready, like doing makeup and stuff like that, or just talking to you about what's going to happen kind of like that okay but then we go up to school because you know we can't just yeah we can't just skip school for a month so Mm. we have to go to school luckily i'm in a year-round school so you were on track out i was on track out oh perfect i didn't have to do anything so there's (laughs) a curtain and on one side, there was um, all the grown-ups, and they were doing their work. And on the other side, there was all the kids. I got to go on the grown-up side. <laughs> <laughs> and I nice. sat next to my mom, playing a game. Oh, wow. While all the other kids were learning. Look at you, in L.A., no school, hanging out with the grown-ups, on your video games. And the other great things about being on set is craft service. Right, yeah. they have good craft service. Like they, there's usually really good food on sets. Yeah, and you yeah. all type service every on a day, cooking show. Every would be day, great. there was like three boxes of Dunkin' Donuts that they would bring <laughs> in. Always back to the donuts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I want to know what you made, but before you tell us on 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 the episode, everybody, all the all the contestants had to make something. Yeah. And then present to the judges, of course. Yeah. I want to know what it is, but but first, we got to take a quick little break to pay the bills over here in this studio. And uh, we're talking about Cisco. Cisco is a, they are the largest food distributor in the universe. And uh, they are the title sponsor of our show. They're the ones that bring all the food to all the restaurants and all the craft services and however wow. you'd like. 
So uh, well, let's figure out like a little little moment to hear about Cisco. Yeah, well, Max, while you know that Cisco is the leader in global food service, we want to highlight their commitment at the local level, doing food, doing good right here at home where food and bev professionals like us, like you, Emerson, yep. live and work. <laughs> yeah, last year Cisco put $46 million dollars towards giving back to local communities. They also donated 16 million meals worldwide and $1 million to nonprofits Feeding America, helping local families in need. Here we are in North Carolina, one in six children face hunger, so this is crucial work. Yep, Cisco also cares about protecting communities through sustainability, sourcing products responsibly, investing in electric vehicles, supporting more than 11,000 growers in their sustainable agricultural program, leading the way not just in food service, but in social responsibility as well. Yeah, so visit Cisco.com, that's S-Y-S-C-O.com, to learn more about Cisco's impact on our local community. Cisco, at the heart of food and service and uh one more product that i think you guys might know about is duke's mayo i don't know how much uh you you're you're using that at home but is is that your preferred main mayonnaise at home um i think we actually might use hellman's but oh, oh uh, no uh -oh. Uh oh we're gonna have to get another kid in here <laughs> just kidding there we go. That's what we like to hear. Dukes all the way. Dukes all the way. We do have Dukes in our refrigerator right now. Um, well, did you know, because a lot, of our, a lot of kids eat too much sugar, that's what I find with my kids, Emerson, that Dukes is the only major mayo brand to be made without sugar. That's yeah. right. And also, I heard that uh, your grandmother has changed her ways. She used to be a, a Hellman's lady and has now switched to Dukes. That's why we have changed our ways. Actually, I think I got her on the Dukes uh, you did? wagon. Yes. Yeah, because you I live did. in the South now. You live in North Carolina. Right, and I, you know, it's my stepmom's favorite forever. Yeah. So she, you know, I kind of had both growing up, um, but I switched to Dukes, and my mom, who was the Hellman's uh, preferred, you know, she started looking at what the ingredients were and uh, decided to switch to Dukes because of the better ingredients and non-GMO and all of that. There you go. You so know, I don't even know if I told you this, but. Uh, for Christmas, Santa put a, a bottle of Duke's mayo in Charlotte's stocking. Nice Santa. <laughs> I mean, she must have been a, she must have been on the nice list this year. She was, well, you know, <laughs> you got mayo, darling. Well, listen, uh, Duke's mayonnaise was created in 1917 in Greenville, South Carolina, by Eugenia Duke. Uh, so, for more information, visit dukesmayo.com or fo or follow them on Instagram at dukes underscore mayonnaise. Yeah, right on. So, okay, I, I re-watched your episode just to get a refresher, and I was looking to see. So, um, with the junior uh, top uh, master, I'm sorry, master chef episode, there was a holiday season, and this is where what you were a part of. It was four episodes, I want to mm -hmm. say, and four. and uh, you came on. They gave you a task. What was your task to cook? Well. My task was to make good food that they would like. Yeah. And they actually didn't judge me on temperature because, you know, we were there for nine hours. Oh, so was the food just kind of sitting around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> food was sitting around for a while. Okay. But, uh, but what did you, I mean, you could have just saying make good food. That's a pretty open-ended request so yeah. with your brain what did you come up with i came up with salmon with couscous and roasted carrots with a vinaigrette because if you guys watch my episode then yeah. you knew i punched that out of a snowman yeah and i was like <laughs> wait this is a weird coincidence because i make this every holiday <laughs> <laughs> yeah so how did that work you for those that didn't see the show, you punched a salmon out of a snowman? Yeah, I punched salmon out of a snowman. And I made salmon with couscous and roasted carrots with a vinaigrette. Yeah. What was your uh, technique on the salmon? How did you prepare it? So, I actually put it in the oven. Oh, yeah. So, I, um, I made some of my seasonings and I put that in a little bowl and then I put some oil in there so that I can take... 
I can take something and just brush it on. Sure, yeah. And then I put it on a pan, and I cook both sides, and I put the pan in the oven. And then when, after like... Skin side down, right? Skin side down. Yeah, get that crispness. Yeah, and then I, after about 10 minutes, I take it out, and I put it on top, and this is the perfect salmon. Okay. So good. I put it on, I get my couscous all ready, and I drop the salmon. <laughs> oh, no. So what happened? Well, they all are slippery. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to make another salmon. Okay. And it was overcooked. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. Because you were doing something else while the salmon was cooking and you forgot yeah. to take it out? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm working on my couscous, I'm working on my carrots, I'm working on... Ah! Yeah. I would have just time. picked up the one on the ground and put it Heck on the Heck yeah, 10-second roll. You're fine. Yeah, God made dirt. Dirt don't hurt. <laughs> you ever... <laughs> Is it, this, this salmon has unique earthy earthiness to it. It's really, it's really distinct. What, how, what did you do? My, my brother's... Uh, Four spices. My brother's friend in high school got fired from KFC because he had dropped the chicken on the ground. And the customer saw him, and he grabbed the chicken, and he threw it back in the fryer. Oh. And then took it out, and then freaked out, and he goes, what? It's deep fried. Yeah. <laughs> it was, everything will die. 800 like, degrees in there. You don't yeah, have to worry about anything. Nothing's going to live. I get it, logic, but... Uh, <laughs> the, the appearance of it. Um, Emerson, did you have to make a savory pie as well? I did have to make a savory pie. Unfortunately, I didn't make it on the episode where I made the savory pie. But um, I made the savory pie, and it was pretty good because... What was it? What? What was in it? What was the... Um, apples mm -hmm. and ground beef. Okay. Ooh. So, I made the apples. Had you made a, a regular pie before, like an apple pie or a dessert pie? Or? I've made pumpkin pie and okay. pecan pie. Do you make the, the crust, the outside by yourself, or you have... Yeah. Yes. I, so, I actually used my Papa Julian's recipe, my grandpa's recipe. Okay. Um, it's a really good recipe, so... That's why I use it. Okay. Nice. And so you had apples, ground beef. Yeah. Apples, ground beef, and then I put the dough on top because usually I don't usually do that. I just... Leave it open top? Yeah. Okay. That's what I do with pumpkin pie. But I was like, well, I'm going to do something different this time. Okay. Called an audible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how did it come out? What did you think? It came out pretty good. I really liked it. And that was a learning experience for you, right? Because you've yeah. never made a savory pie before. Yeah, and, I've made... And then you put the top on it, so go ahead, so you've made... I've I've made pies before, but never a savory one. So now, is that in your regular repertoire, that, like, at home, or will you make more savory pies, you think? I make them on special occasions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now, have you set yourself up, like, because you're the TV star and the chef and all, do you have to cook at home all yeah. the time now? Pretty much all the time. Yeah, like when family comes over, do they expect? No, nope, we want Emerson to cook. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I have to keep on cooking pretty much every day because we um, we need content for my Instagram. <laughs> I'm building true. up followers. Smart kid. Yeah. <laughs> and you're hungry. That that happens and every I'm day. Hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, so okay, you're 10 years old, right? When yeah. when uh, well you when what what month is your birthday in? Um, October 16th. Oh, okay, oh, October 16th. Fellow Libra. Anybody right, wants to send, Wait, you know. Are you a Libra? I'm a Libra too. Yeah. But yeah. I'm the end of September. They can send uh, gifts to your Instagram for your birthday, right? For your <laughs> yeah. 11th birthday. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, I think a lot of kids at this day and age, when you're sitting on the, and you're in your mom's telling you to, or your dad's telling you to go to bed and you're sitting up and not reading and just sitting up, you're thinking about, oh, what am I going to be when I grow up? But you've got to have a lot of choices, right? You could be, you could be a chef. You could be an actor. Rumor has it that you're also uh, quite the stand-up comedian. Yeah, so, I've performed at the Ice House Comedy Club. Okay. Oh, the times. Ice House is nice. Yeah, it's the oldest comedy club in America. Yeah, and didn't they just remodel it? It's like, yeah, it they looks did. nice now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by the way, you can see some of his stand-up on his YouTube page. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, if you go to the Cool Beans Comedy 
Cool uh, Beans Comedy? Yep, it's okay. on our YouTube. What's like your uh, your shtick? Like, uh, do you talk about food jokes? Do you talk about it all? What, what I just does... kind of talk about stuff that happens in my life. Okay. Um, my first one, I was just kind of introducing who am I. Um, yeah, observational been... humor. Very Jerry Seinfeld-esque. I like it. Very much. Yeah. yeah. Max is jealous, by the way. He's been trying to write a joke for years, mm -hmm. and none of them are appropriate for this conversation right now. <laughs> I've got very few jokes. <laughs> do you have, can you lend us a joke? Could you could you do a joke here and now? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, hmm. but I'm putting you on the spot. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to think of the best joke. You know what? I'll make y'all wait to the end. Oh, okay. oh! Stay tuned. I like this kid. He understands he, production, yeah, timing, understands pacing, getting those listeners to suspense. Yeah. Um, okay, but back to my original question. So you have all these things on the table, but you know, a lot of kids when they're your age, they think, "Oh, I want to be a firefighter, or a policeman, or an astronaut, or a president, or whatever." Yeah. What do you think? Do you do you ha do you have? A, a I think I'm gonna be an a, an actor, comedian, cook. Anything. Like a personality. Your personality. personality. Yeah. 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 That's a good thing because then you're not completely um, pigeonholed into one one pocket, you know? Yeah. You're creating your brand, as they say, right? Yeah. I might be doing, like, I might be doing comedy for a while and then I go back to cooking and then I, then I go back to some acting more. Mm -hmm. and I, I might, like, lift one up at a time but then lift the other one up. I like it. Yeah. Do you have a? Are you are you a singer too? Do you have any musical uh, ability? Uh, yeah. Not yet. You're you're, you're working on that. Whistle while you work, kind of thing. <laughs> he's he's had some singing classes, but I would say that's not necessarily his area of. <laughs> that's okay. <account. laughs> Your voice is going to change anyway, so I'm going to save those till uh, till after. We that do happens. a lot of singing in the car. Yeah. 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 I do a lot in the shower. Yeah. Pretty good. Me too. Yeah. I gotta ask because uh, it is we are in. Uh, if you're a big sports fan at all, oh yeah, are you a big sports? You like football? Oh, oh, oh yes, I love football because it's the playoffs right now. Yeah, I just watched the last game, the Bills versus Chiefs. Oh, those Bills, they just don't know how to win. Well, Patrick Mahomes knows how to win. You can I also know. say. But like the city of uh, Buffalo. This is, is a Raiders like, fan, by the way, so he is so anti Chiefs. Yeah, see right here. Yeah, um, excuse but, uh, me. I am a Chiefs fan all the way. Oh, <laughs> rivalry! This, I'm with you, Emerson. I like the I like the Chiefs. Ugh, yeah, I don't know how Matt is such a Chiefs fan and a Mahomes. I like fan. greatness. I like that we get to witness greatness. Matt looks at the TV and sees a guy whining and whimpering and complaining that he didn't get his way, and he thought, "I like that. I like that. That makes me feel good. Makes me makes me feel like home." And uh, so I get it. Makes me feel like <laughs> Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Taylor Swift fan? Because you know yes, she's I at am. every at every game. Yes, yeah. I am a Taylor Swift fan. All right, hard take right now. Do you think she's good or bad for football? I think she's good for football because they, um, because Kelsey actually got two touchdowns last time. Yeah. Do you think he's playing for her? Playing better. Yeah. He's playing better because of her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. That's a hard. That's a big take right there, but I like it. Uh, so I was I was thinking though because meshing all of your talents together, your love of football and the Chiefs, whatever. <laughs> Do you have any Super Bowl recipes or anything you want to mm. make for the Super Bowl? Anything that comes to mind, like a good dip, a good wing? What are we thinking? Oh, oh, wait a minute! What a segue! What do we got here? We have. Some meatball sliders. Oh, oh, okay. Get in my belly. <laughs> so we we have two types of meatball sliders. Can you describe them? So one we have a pimento cheese meatball slider with barbecue with barbecue sauce. Oh, okay. Very North Carolina. Yeah. The other we have a pizza. Um, style one. A pizza meatball slider? And you oh can't judge on temperature. Yes, that's fair. Yeah, we're not on judging on temperature. But we did make them this morning. Go. And is that on a King's Hawaiian roll yes, that I see? absolutely. Look at that. Oh, look at how delicious this oh, is. Bring it this way. Yeah. We're polite. We passed. Oh, there's the pizza <laughs> one. 
Thank you. Oh my gosh. This, All right. Okay, wait. I'm so, hungry. I want one. Summer sent me one. Yeah, too. I have one. <laughs> what wine would you pair with this? Hmm. Let's see. Oh yeah. Whoa. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm having the pimento cheese one. That's delicious. I mean, I can't wait to be eating this, watching Patrick Mahomes throw touchdowns to Travis Kelsey. Right? As yeah. we were making these, I thought the Super Bowl, I think, you know, maybe we need to have a Super Bowl party. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a viewing party for MasterChef Junior, you know, for his episode. Okay. And, and what did you make? Um, well, you know, since it came on at, at 8 o'clock p.m. on a Sunday, that was a little challenging. <laughs> a little so for the kids. You know, we just did, um, like, a bring a dessert and we did a um, popcorn machine, and we did like a hot cocoa bar. I love that. Candy bar. So um, for his birthdays and parties, he likes to do popcorn and then put candy in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Candy so, popcorn. Yeah, we did that. Uh, but we had four screens to view. We had about 100 people at our house. Whoa, that's awesome. And uh, we had wow. our, a screen in our living room, on our back porch, in the garage. It was crazy. And in the dining room. It was crazy. Uh, but we got a lot of comments that night, like, oh, now we know where the Super Bowl party needs to be. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. All we'll, right. So we'll wait for our invite. Yeah. yeah. But, but That's fine. Uh, As the parents of a budding star, you guys have jobs, I'm assuming, or we'll we do. one of you. So, yeah. We how, does that, do. how does that how does that work? We um we have very flexible jobs, I would okay. say. So uh, he actually got into the acting side of it because uh, when we were in California, we had our own business. We had an events production company. Okay. And with events work, as I'm sure you can imagine, it was just very you know busy. It was a seven day a week kind of job, and we both like worked large there. corporate events or uh, we, at did, all the above? we did outdoor recreational sporting events, so running, triathlon, bike tours, that sort of thing. Uh, Jonathan, my husband, started the company. You know, I don't know, 2000. About four, two thousand four. Okay, um, keep, keep it down over there, Jonathan. Please. We, <laughs> we we met, and uh, you know he started hiring me. So by the time Emerson was born, it was a full on family business, and uh, Emerson grew up going to these events, and he would get on the mic with the MC and you know tell jokes and hand out awards and that sort of thing as, as a little guy. But our schedule was such that, you know, he couldn't do sort of that traditional soccer or baseball schedule where you never know when they need to be, where they need to be. Right. So we put him in acting because of his personality, and it was close, and it was a regular set schedule. And, um, he, you know, he just kind of flourished there in, in that setting. That's what I was going to ask is um, because of his personality uh, – I know that I can be ridiculous and silly at times, but I know where I got it because my mom is exactly me when it comes to things of uh, her humor and her silliness. Emerson, where'd you get? Where where did this part of this personality, this outgoing personality, come from within your family? I think it came from a mix of my mom and a mix of my dad. Yeah. Well, we can't keep Jonathan quiet over here because he's just <laughs> really. <laughs> he's he's just going on and on over here, but um, but yeah. To so be fair, we gave mom the microphone. So <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, yeah, yeah I would yeah, say Jonathan's true. probably actually better on the mic than I am. Oh yeah, well, yeah. But uh, but yeah. So do you 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 have uh, you have funny, outgoing, hilarious parents? Is that what we're getting at? Uh yeah, they're they're both really great. <laughs> Aww. Um, yeah, he just you know. He's always been like this since he was a baby. You know, but before he could talk, he was just outgoing. And we just kind of let him be that way mm -hmm. and yeah. sort of encouraged him, you know, to talk to strangers, if, you know. <laughs> totally. I mean, that's that's the thing. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit scary when you're a parent and your kid is so into, yeah. you know, making people laugh. And, uh, he, and you so know, he, he'd go into socially, restaurants sure. and be sitting with the people next to us instead of us but right. uh you know he's turned out pretty great so yeah it's a pretty good kid yeah my uh my oldest daughter the they're having spirit week at her uh, junior high and today is uh, dress up as a character and so we're like okay and she went through a few different things guess what she chose what you me <laughs> she, she dressed up as you <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, she put on a Raiders hat and a Raiders shirt because they're the best. Did she color in a, a beard? I asked her where the beard was, and she's like, whatever, Dad. <laughs> but yeah, she and apparently all of all of her girlfriends, like the three of them, all dressed up as their dads. Oh, That's really cute. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Um, but uh, but I, I, have, I have a couple more questions for you, Emerson, because you represent... The, the next, next, next generation. You're Gen Alpha, right? I think you're... I am Gen Alpha. Yeah, you're Gen Alpha. So that's a... That's a and, my, and my daughter Charlotte is Gen Alpha as well. And there's a huge divide. Gen Z, we're done with them. They're old now. We don't, we don't even need to hear from them anymore. I want to know, with Gen Alpha and the restaurant industry, how are you... What, if you had your own restaurant right now, how would you like how would you make your restaurant how would it be fun and cool and different than all the stuff that we have been seeing recently well i would make a stage for oh. comedy mm. while you're eating dinner and a show i like it smart entertainment and you could, like, there could be like music a band so anything to go on there and then we have we would have of the finest kitchen you have ever seen okay <laughs> and would it be like you could you see the kitchen from the dining room like would it be open so you could look in um yeah you, you would be able to there would still be like glass there so you couldn't like walk in or if something exploded it wouldn't smoke wouldn't <laughs> go right into your yeah, face that's smart, like, smart. Correct. Mm-hmm. so um yeah and then i would also have like probably some giant screens if people wanted to come and watch football Okay. Super Bowl? Yeah, I like you're about the entertainment side of it. Yeah, always um, a showman. Like, the kitchen is on display, the stage, you got everything going. What yeah. about the menu? What, what are you going to serve there? Um, I would probably serve some stuff that um, Gordon Ramsay would <laughs> serve. <laughs> he's still alive, you know. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's with us. <laughs> but something that a Gordon Ramsay like, would would make. Can you give us an example? Like, what's what's the hardest, most you know, like uh, something you would find on a really elegant restaurant dish that you've ever cooked? Beef Wellington. Oh, oh yeah. beef Wellington. That that has had such a reprisal. The whole Wellington, yeah. like that was an '80s thing, and then just went completely. Like, I feel like people who cooked in the '90s and the early aughts don't even know what beef Wellington is. Yeah, and it's like. The most labor intensive, yeah. like time consuming thing. It's like, what are we doing? The Francaises we're talking about. Yeah, that was just like professional. Was, yeah. One yeah. day, um, me and my mom looked up a Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay's beef Wellington recipe, and we were like, so I kept on reading it, and I was like, how much longer do you want us to have? It's already been two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not an easy thing to make. But all right, so you've got a dinner, a movie. Be- beef Wellington. Yeah. Wait. How did the beef Wellington come out? Was it good? Um. It was actually pretty good. Mom. Dad. Yeah, we haven't made it. <laughs> oh, you haven't made it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've had it before, though. Yeah. So, no, it, we haven't made Gordon Ramsay's. I made well, not Gordon Ramsay. I, I made, made a beef Wellington like appetizer. Oh. Uh, like a little. Like a little bite size. Like that. Yes. Yeah. I used to live in D.C. and the Willard Hotel, and we had events there, and they had an amazing beef wellington appetizer that i was trying to recreate that was pretty good it was not the willard quality though yeah yeah not not the gordon ramsay one have you eaten have you eaten at a gordon ramsay restaurant no no i really want to though i can tell i i have by the way there's a restaurant in hollywood that we that we ate at and when my kids were really really little we went there and there's a gift shop not related to the restaurant just just next door just kind of a souvenir shop and i bought my daughter's a little turtle and a little pigeon stuffed animal. And what did they name them? Gordon and Ramsey. I like it. <laughs> they're still in the house today. So, yeah, Gordon and Ramsey, they're, uh, they're members of the family. But, um, all right, so what's next for you, Emerson? What, uh, what do you have on your agenda? Um, so we were, we've been thinking more Durham Bull stuff because... They're about to get back in season. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a book with tons of signatures on them. Okay. And um, also, we were thinking maybe like restaurants in the area. We could go learn how to cook something, cook it, and then 
um, like do a restaurant review. We want to do yes. something like that. Do you have a favorite restaurant in, in the area? Um, I, there's a place called Corbett's, um, Burger yeah. and Soda. Oh, Corbett's it's, in Cary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like an old, like a soda fountain. Yes. And take yeah, place, it's burgers super and, good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You know, I was thinking, Max, I don't know, uh, we got to think about the legalities of this or stuff like this, but, um. Can you do a brisket? Well, I was, I was thinking that. Yeah, do you know how to make brisket? Um, no, I've never been, I've never made it. We might have to challenge you. We do every June, the first weekend in June, we do a, a festival that uh, highlights bubbles, so the pairing of champagne and other sparkling wine with brisket. And we get Ooh. 10 uh, ten different chefs from around the state who are uh, pretty avid uh, brisket fans to make their style of brisket, so... Oh um, man, nice. Yeah, yeah. we're in. I we might have to have like but a you'd also have to do, division. Yeah, and you'd also have to do like a tight five on stage, I think. What does that mean? Like five minutes of comedy. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, we are kind of getting towards the end of it. Yeah. Here. You said you were going to save a, a hilarious joke for us. So, I, I mean, I don't want to put the pressure on you, but uh, what you got? What do you call a cow? With no legs. What do you call a cow with no legs? I don't know. Ground beef. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that was hilarious. That's yeah. very good, very good, very good. Cool. Well, yeah, th all right. this has been awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming, and thank you for feeding us, seriously. Uh, yeah, just in time. We really yeah. appreciate that. And, um, well, what is the what is the uh, Instagram handle that we should go follow Emerson at? Emerson Polly. Emerson Polly. That's uh, Emerson and then P-A-U-L-E-Y. So we'll go check that out. Uh, Max, you got anything else uh, that we need to chat about before we get out of here? Uh, either go Niners or go Lions. That's it. Hard on Hard in the NFC. Hard in the NFC. All right, fair enough. You heard it. What about you? Do you do you have a pretty? You, are you just all the go Chiefs all the way? Um, go Chiefs. Yeah, I'm with you, Emerson. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll come to the Super Bowl party. I'll I'll bring the wine for there mom and go. dad. Yes. Um, but for all of you out there, go check out Emerson Pauly on Instagram and uh, or Daily Emerson on YouTube or Daily right. Emerson on YouTube, and maybe we can find this guy. And what I was going to say is, maybe we can talk to one of our chef friends and have Emerson Pauly as a guest sh guest chef one night. Oh, no, I like that idea. And like uh, do a do a whole do a whole Emerson in the kitchen uh, thing. But yeah, until awesome. then, yeah, check out his page and uh, Emerson Pauly. You will eat and drink extremely merrily. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And out.